Good day to everyone. Now that we have all the major parts made for this mechanism, we can begin to focus on some of the smaller uh, jobs that need to be done, smaller little issues that need to be taken care of. And uh, we'll do that in this video. We're going to start with the wheel assembly. In a previous video, I gold electroplated all the brass gears that I had made um, so that it would match the original gears which would have been gold plated as well. Unlike uh, what I did before, this time I'm going to test each one of the gears and make sure that they run true. You may have noticed on a previous video that some of them wobbled a little bit. An additional thing that you may have noticed on a previous video is that while the repeater mechanism worked, um, it had a couple little issues that um, needed to be addressed. Now, one of them was that uh, the repeater didn't play its full cycle, and I in part suspected uh, the problem was that the spring that I had made for the repeater mechanism was offering too much resistance. So I'm going to take my spring and I'm going to make it thinner. And in the course of time, I had to grind away at it and retest and uh, grind a little bit more away from it and test it again. And ultimately, I came up with uh, a spring that was not only much thinner, but also much, um, it lost some of its height or depth, however you would qualify it as. Um, but in the end, it was sufficient to do the job, as well as not so strong that um, it would resist the mechanism from running. Another Thing that I don't know if you noticed in a previous video, but um, the bells, when they strike, uh, especially during the quarter strike, um, a couple of the times the, the bells, the hammers would fall together. They would strike together, and it should be, um, they should have a, Traditionally, in newer repeaters, it would be a bim-bam sound, but on this, it's just one tone. So there's a double strike instead of the two of them striking together. And so, because they were striking together, I uh, needed to adjust the quarter rack. And I'm doing that here with a diamond file. Also, in addition to adjusting the height of the, the teeth on the quarter rack, there had been one of the teeth on the quarter rack that had been replaced. And so I'm just going to finish this rack so that that replacement tooth is flush with the rest of the, the piece of steel. I'm also going to finish it so that it has a finish on it similar to the rest of the rack. I'm going to do this um, first with a diamond file and then I will take it through my steps of polishing which I explained in a previous video. Basically uh, abrasive paper attached to uh, a stick. And go through the various stages to where you get the finish that you you're looking for. Um, and then after that, do a final test to make sure that the striking is as we want it to be. The next thing that we need to address is um, the timekeeping of this. 
I explained in, in a previous video that it was running exceptionally fast. And I thought I could make a couple of adjustments and slow the, the clock down, but I wasn't able to slow it down to the extent that I had hoped. I was in quite a fix because this was the, the longest hairspring of its kind that I that I had, and of course, hairsprings like this are not really uh, easily available. And I had several options in front of me, and the option that I settled on after discussing it with the customer was that I would try to take the existing hairspring that I have and make it thinner. And the process that I'm following here is um, basically a process that another YouTuber uses to make a hairspring from scratch. Now, this is not rec recommended for, for newer watches, but this is very similar to the way hairsprings were originally made for fusee watches, so very old watches. Um, it involves, in, in my case, it involves stretching out the original hairspring or the hairspring that I have. The original hairspring was actually broken and way too short. So I use this one and I'm stretching it out, taking measurements of it. And I found that the thickness of this hairspring was about 11 hundredths of a millimeter. And so... We're going to, again, resort to popsicle sticks with uh, abrasive paper uh, glued to them. And we're going to reduce the thickness of the hairspring. And I'm going to do it just by uh, a couple hundredths of a millimeter. So we start at 11 hundredths and I'm going to take it down to 9 hundredths. And it's just a matter of working the hairspring uh, and stopping periodically to measure um, the thickness. Like I said, this is not the process, uh, a process that I came up with. It was a process that another YouTuber introduced me to um, after watching his video. His, his name is The Selective Luddite. And I'm going to put a link in the first of his videos. He has a three-part series where he makes one from scratch. He makes a, a hairspring for a fusee from scratch from some piano wire. And I'm going to put a link to that video in the description below if you're, you're interested in watching that. After you've achieved... Um, the thickness that you're shooting for. Of course, remove it. Now, in my case, the, the spring coils up again, but of course not to the original shape that it should be in. So we have to go through the process of putting the, the hairspring back into its original form this again is is covered by the selective luddite and his and his uh, videos but i'll show you just briefly here it's a matter of of holding uh the spring in a in a sliding pin vise and starting with the inner coil uh, using a rounded object like the back of a pair of tweezers or, or a, a screwdriver on a soft surface like silicon or rubber you either slide the, the screwdriver over the, the, the ribbon of steel and it causes it to curve. And what I found to be most successful, especially for those inner few coils, is actually taking a screwdriver and rolling it, pressing down into the rubber and rolling it, and that form the coils uh, a lot better than simply sliding something on the steel. 
So bit by bit, you you begin forming the correct or or close to the correct looking coils. Now, when you have all the the coils completed, um, there's still going to be some straightening because it's very unlikely that it's going to be perfectly flat. So you've got to uh, do your hairspring manipulations and get it back to flat or close to flat again. Um, it won't be flawless. Uh, again, measuring by the, the the newer standards, but it will be. Uh, it will look very similar to uh, what was there originally. And then you can uh, reinstall it into the into the mechanism and test it. I did, and I was pleased to um, see that it was sufficient uh, to weaken the hairspring enough that it brought the the mechanism timekeeping significantly slower and uh, well within the ability to to regulate the the timepiece to a more accurate standard uh, which I'll which I'll do in the future and the last thing that I want to show you is uh, a little marker that I needed to add to the eccentric bushings now this is the the last bushing or 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 gear in the alarm and repeater mechanism and Using a, a pocket watch, a fusee pocket watch of similar vintage, um, you'll note from this picture here that uh, the marker that they use uh, for regulating the speed of, of the repeater or the speed of the alarm is simply a, a piece of blued steel wire or maybe a tapered pin that... Uh, was put in to that eccentric bushing and bent slightly so it uh, interacts with the, the 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 scale there from slow to fast and so to do this i i uh, removed both of the eccentric bushings and um, held them in such a way where i could drill a hole in through the side very tiny hole um, that would be able to receive uh, a piece of steel wire or steel. I'm, I'm actually going to make a, a, a taper pin. So in the lathe then I use a just a diamond file to, to grind away at a piece of steel to where it has the, just a slight taper and and the correct diameter to fit into the hole and that comes with a trial fit there then too. I give it a slightly better finish than the the diamond file leaves and then once that is finished I blew it and while I blew the taper pins. I also re-blew the hairspring because it was blued originally so we're just going to take it take it back to that blue finish. And uh, this is what they look like installed. Um, this is this is so if you adjust it you can you can tell using that degree uh, scale how much you're adjusting. The movement of that bushing. And that is it for this video. Um, pretty much all that is left at this point is uh, the, the full cleaning and reassembly. Uh, in the process of, of doing the cleaning there is one hammer that still has some surface rust that I'll polish off in the same manner that I've done before. And, um, yeah, reassembly and then the final 
testing and adjusting for uh, timekeeping will be the last the last little bit that we do. So hopefully I'll be able to wrap up these few things in the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.